I'm planning on changing the background eventually. It's just only temporary. Just most things are. I'm just gonna read from a fairly quick um, article post I wrote because it moves me and it orients things, outlines, and uh, clarifies motive or direction, basically puts, puts things into a, a kind of, I don't want to say emotional context, but a, uh, a context which I think I feel is important. I've also been in and out of pain, so I'm like out of it. Uh, nerve pain. It's actually a dream I just had after probably seven or eight hours of rolling around because of a new nerve pain that I have yet to meet. It's just really, really uncomfortable. Nerve entrapment. But um, I'm not in too much pain right now, but I have a feeling it could return. Um, it should be it should be all right sooner or later. So I have these dreams which are like visions. In a recent one, I oversaw the lives of people who lived in ways that were constantly out of sync with their heart. They were motivated through the mind. They were always feeding some larger system. They were fighting the flames of some eventual decay just to keep up a business in the dark of night, to file papers and take the right reports and file the right documents just because someone else told them to. Still, if there were issues, their hearts hurt. They were worried, their minds ached. I've been in some very torturous experiences in life. These experiences put into perspective the danger of living life like these dream visions. Those dream visions which are like glimpses of complete lives of others, their personality, their emotions, their joys, their folly, their praise, were the true suffering of the world, or at least in my life. And the possibility that I could view times where I possibly live like that, but I never really lived out of the heart. The feeling is unbearable. This is merely a nearly never-ending, posh, yet uncomfortable life lived in the essence of someone else's requirements. Some of these dreams take place in the high-class high cityscapes where people toil and plunder until their hearts go cold. The feeling of ha that feeling of having everything that is needed yet not having their heart in their life literally has me weeping. These are real people, just as real as anyone here considers themselves real. These are the people of the world. If what you're doing, the life you're living, the worries you have taken on, is not, maybe are not, aligned with your heart, then that life is a lesson that you must do what is right for your sense of truth and meaning in the larger picture and every issue and challenge in that life will reflect that. This is because the heart is the center of meaning. Remember that, cherish that, always put your heart in. Even if there's something that you're not enjoying because of the mental disconnect with the heart, then connect your heart to what you can connect with. This should be simple. People are what we connect with. People are what we enjoy. People are who we are here to experience, the emotions of, and combine creativities and challenges and growth with. We are meant to constantly change. This is to be embraced in a divine love of reason, truth, and freedom. That is the savior of your existence. The world in which people do what they do out of some other reason is the alien environment. The difference is merely the energy which connects the heart to the mind and you to your reality and those around you. The heart cannot be destroyed, but
but we can experience ter terrible loneliness and shock which sometimes produces deep injuries and scars that must be healed. We must apply healing to ourselves in the same way one would apply a new layer to a creation or an, an additional paragraph to a chapter. That's easy to do. We simply have to keep going, keep caring, keep looking for others, and care for them too. That is the power the universe has granted you. There is more power in caring, creating, and knowing reason than in all the disconnected visceral pleasure or materialistic gain to be had. That's the whole world. You can gain the whole world if you don't care. You know, if you haven't kept care, it's not going to do anything. That's the big, that's the bargain. That's why it's so cheap. And it's so important and care is so vital. And if there is pleasure or gain in, and your heart is remaining true, then that is simply all the better for you and those around you. Keep your heart connected to what you're doing. As long as this is, a, is sustained, there will always be an inherent meaning in life that guides you, motivates you, propels you, informs you, and cares for you. That is your saving grace. That's all of our saving grace. I love you, and remember to care for each other. Everything will orient itself from where your heart is. There is fighting. There are agendas. There are methods being applied, and these are resolved through caring and living life with that as the focal point. When we change our lives individually to account for and respect that care, then the whole system has changed. That is how this part is up to us. It can't be done for us. It's our responsibility to care for others and ourselves. It's easy to care for yourself. That's a given. Caring for others is what allows your care to magnify, which then exponentially increases the effect in reality. Care is the hidden oil that flows between the gears of change, enabling processes to take place without distorting out of personal or collective alignment with what is reasonable, beneficial, and creative. This care, combined with truth, reason, or knowledge, free will, and self-awareness is compassion. This, combined with the world, is harmony, and that is the pinnacle of existence. Thank you. I wanted to add that it's the pinnacle, not the bane of existence, because some people may feel they have it backwards.